So when we first started launching this and started talking about it, immediately, I would say in the first week, we started getting words about pioneering. And God just started highlighting that word, pioneering. I see everybody here is kind of a backbone to what's being birthed. And everybody has calls and, as we've talked before, areas in your life that God has called you to, that you're going to fulfill, that you are fulfilling. And what I see is that we're all pioneers. It's not just Breakaway or it's not just Jason, it's not just Cassie, but we're all pioneers. And what I started to see is the words that we've been given as far as pioneers go, it goes beyond me. It goes beyond Jason. It goes beyond Breakaway. Many of the words that we've been given, the revelation, the direction, it, it's not for me and Jason. It's not for Cassie and Christy. It's, I believe it's for everybody. And actually, one of the words that we're going to share with you, it wasn't even a word that was directly to us. We don't even know the guy. It was a word that was given in 2019, I believe, or 2020. Before we even, even had a thought of this. And now when we read that prophecy that was given to us, it, it speaks to what we're stepping into so much that it's like, whoa, this guy doesn't even know. He just kind of put it out there, and it speaks like it was directly for us. So, again, as we begin to step into us, the Lord started speaking to us, to us about pioneers. And I'm going to have Jason share a couple of words that, were, that God started highlighting. So this is, there's a song by Rick Pino called Pioneer. If you haven't listened to it, it's a really good song. We actually thought about playing it. We might play it at the end. But I had listened to this song for probably two years. And so I finally sent it to Serge, and all of a sudden Serge sends me back what you see written up there. A pioneering place and people willing to go together, not alone. The Lord going before them, leading the way, blazing a new trail out of the box as the Lord leads. And one thing is he was talking about, this pioneering is not just about us, it's about everybody. A lot of churches, if you look at it, it's about raising people up to be under their ministry. But we've already had the opportunity to pray and send out people to other places. And we know it's coming again in the next one. It's about encouraging people where a lot of people think, well, I'm stepping out on my own. We want to be a place that says we're stepping out with you. Yes. Whether we get to go to Hawaii or Montana or whatever. Yes. It's about stepping out together because pioneering, we think, man, we got, it's all about being alone. But it's no. This, the word is, it's a place and people. It's not a person. It's a people. Yes. Yep. Wherever any of you guys go, we want to be with you. We want to encourage you. There was a couple here that they were talking about how they wanted to do something. And people said, well, no, you're not ready. You know what? They're not going to be ready. But, you know, when the Lord says do it, you do it. Because most of the time you don't feel equipped when the Lord says do it. But you go ahead and do it because He is faithful. When you step out in obedience, He's faithful. And we want to be the people that says, hey, we're with you. Because guess what? We're going to fall. We've fallen. We're all going to fall. But when you pioneer with a people, when you pioneer with people, you, when they fall, you pick them up. And you keep going. You keep blazing the trail that's been set before you. And you're not stuck with it. So that's why it's not about being a pioneer person. It's about a people. It's about a group. It's about getting everybody together. Because next thing you know, if it's just me, I'm cutting a small, I don't know if you ever went hiking with a machete, I'm cutting a small path. If it's me and Serge, it's twice as wide. If it's four of us, if it's all of us, you know how big of a path we're now leading? How big of a path we're cutting? And say this one goes off here, and we're able to support them. And that's still a path that we're cutting together. So that's the pioneering aspect yeah. It's not about, a lot of people want to hear pioneer, it's about the one person. The kingdom is not about a hierarchy model. It's about doing it together with one head. We're not the head. We're just pioneers in this local body where we all do this together. It's not about us being the head. It's about us being the servants as example, and we just go together. Pioneers are doing it together. We're a people group blazing a trail for what he's called us to. And as we'll get to by the end of the night, what he's calling us to do as breakaway is not new for the kingdom. But it's about doing it together with people. And when somebody, I mean, so many people will say people aren't ready for ministry and all that stuff. Who all ever was ready for ministry when I stepped out? If I look at what I taught even three years ago, 
I'd be like, man, I had very little revelation. But you know what? When you walk with people, that's how you get through it, and you get greater and greater revelation, and you're able to help more and more people. So a pioneering place and people, willing to go together, not alone. The Lord going before us, leading the way. The Lord going before us, leading the way. Jason said, we're not the head. Because in this thing that we're launching, what we heard was, he's the head. It's not a hierarchy, he's the head. And it's like, what well, you need? No, he's the head. He's the head of the body. Willing to go together, not alone. Most of the time, people think it's easier to go alone. Because guess what? When you go alone, you don't have to communicate. I just got to talk to myself and do yeah. what I want to do. But there's no accountability talking to myself. Yeah. But when I go together, I have people that fill in my weaknesses. I have people that are able to call me out to say, hey, you're doing great. Hey, that's probably not the smartest thing. Right. It allows willing to go together actually is the kingdom way. But sometimes it's the harder way. Yeah. If you look at it. Because it's not about me. When I go together, I'm thinking about how does it affect my family? How does it affect my church family? Because we're all family. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. What I do, how does it affect the next person? And so yep. it's not just about me. Because when it's just me, I, I can be a little more selfish. Yep. So a good example of this is you guys know we're wanting in January to start Breakaway Kingdom Academy, a co-op basically for homeschool moms and dads. So we recently got hooked up with a lady through a Facebook uh, comment that I made, hooked up with us, and she sent us a few documents on what they did to, to put together their academy. So, man, it totally filled in the gaps for us. It, we haven't looked at it really deep, but I looked at it a little bit. It's got pricing on there. It's, got, it's basically a contract. Man, that's what we need. So she filled in the gap. It was community. And Walking together. The cool part about that is they're in Oregon. Yeah. And she also gave us the pitfalls that she had was yeah. like one, I didn't charge enough. Yeah. So what you see here is not really sufficient. Yeah. And I would have had the way she contracted her teachers, I would do that differently. So we get to learn from their mistakes yeah. in the kingdom. Yep. So basically we're pioneering with her. Yep. Another word we got was servant pioneers who serve the Lord and his people. Servant pioneers who are looking not to their own interests, but also to the interest of others. Servant pioneers who place others above themselves. Servant pioneers who take others' burdens as their own. Servant pioneers who rejoice when others receive victory. Servant pioneers who step into the very nature and image of the Father. For they so love the world that they give, like God gave His only begotten Son, Jesus. Servant pioneers who take the very mind of Christ. Servant pioneers who come not to be served, but to serve and to give their life for many. Listen, this is a word for everyone. This, this is not for, like I said, this is not for us. But we want to share this prophetic word that was given in 2021. And I've shared this with two people in the last couple of days. Because I see it even speaking to their situation. And this goes to this new era, this new time, this new season that we have literally stepped into. Like the, the body has already stepped into it. And this word speaks to that and speaks to what, what it is. So this was actually sent to us from the resistance chicks. I don't know if you guys any of you met them, but it's Lee and Michelle yeah. Stevenson. Out of Ohio, and Surgeon Christie known them for how many years? A long time. A long time. So through them, I've got to speak with them over Marco Polo. But they sent to this probably in April time frame. But the guy that wrote it was Roland Redeemed Hickman. He wrote this on 12-23-2020, and it was a prophetic word for 2021. So 2021 will be the year of the pioneer and pilgrims of the Lord. I see something similar to the Oregon Trail in the realm of the Spirit. But the Lord said to me, It is the highway of holiness, and that there will be many pioneers that will be sent on assignment to blaze trails that will open up the birth fire hubs across the nations of the world. Okay, hold on. So, there's a couple of things here. The new era, the new time, what we've stepped into, it's a highway of holiness. 
A blaze trail that will open up and birth fire hubs yes. across the nations in the world. And what's crazy is we were already starting to call it a hub. We already saw this as a hub. And what, what other prophets are seeing is hubs all over the nation and all over the world. And we believe Robbie's one of those. I honestly believe, I'm not talking about for Breakaway, I'm talking about for the kingdom. We believe Robbie is one of those in Hawaii. And I also believe that Tessa and Joel are going to be carrying some of that also with them. The degree of your obedience will determine the level of manifestation you will witness in the next movement, which will require the laying down of everything. So the degree of you stepping into your righteousness is going gonna, is gonna to show the manifestation, basically. You'll see the fruits of it. Go ahead. Um, so the next line of this, I see the pioneers pioneering, finding, pioneers finding new lands and forming new governments and forming new fresh documents and establishing laws that will protect what is being built and to protect from corruption. Yes. So, Breakaway Kingdom Hub, a community, a village, a city. That's the new lands. You, you guys who were associated with us at the last church, where that word we started getting for, I thought it was for that church. I thought it was for me at first, then I thought it was for that church, and then I started realizing, man, this is for the body of Christ. Because so many other people were getting it. That it's a new season, a new era. We're stepping into something brand new. And the word was, what, that I got was, it was a new operating system, a new government. And with that came, you, didn't, you don't know what this new system, how it works. You have to learn it. And it may get frustrating, and that's okay. But once you learn it, it's going to be so much better. And new documents. Immediately, the Lord had to start putting together documents. We started creating content. It was the foundation for what this hub would be built on. And this is the document we have, and it's still a work in progress, as you'll see. There's still some fine-tuning to be done. We're still brand new into this. So we're still laying foundations. Our government, with the breakaway, is a five, what the Lord showed us was it's going to be a five-fold government. The governance of the breakaway kingdom hub, fulfilled by a group of five-fold servants, who come not to be served, but to serve. Fivefold servanthood governance, full of faith, power, love, and humility, all working together, making decisions together based on the direction of Christ Jesus, the head. He's the head, not Jason, not Christy, not Serge. Jesus is the head. Who's running, who's running breakaway? It's not Jason, it's not Serge. It's a fivefold governance. It's a whole round table of people running the hub. Through honest and transparent discussion and communication in order to train, equip, mature the saints. So, forming new governments and forming new fresh documents and establishing laws that will protect what is being built and to protect from corruption. When we started putting this together, there was one day that I ran across a story and it was just a really crazy story about a pastor who built this church for, I think, 11 years. And then there was some conflict on the board, and they fired him. He had, he'd put his whole life into this ministry, all his finances. His wife, his kids, and all, they were left with nothing. And I'm like, man, that's brutal. That's brutal over a little conflict. And I was like, that's not right. we got to protect this. How do we protect it? So we started saying, you know, I don't know. What do we do? I was like, here's what we do. We pray. Let's pray. And say, God, give us wisdom. And immediately, Jason was like, book of Judges. And then what's crazy is the week, the day before, I had read about in Corinthians, where he's like, why do you go outside and take people to court? Don't you have judges among you? He was talking about governance in the church. So Jason was like, a council of judges. And so you'll see here the council of judges. The council of judges consists of those full of the Holy Spirit, love, faith, and power. They are believers that are mature in the Lord's ways, in His Word, and are known to make sound judgments. The Council of Judges is equipped to be unbiased mediators and promote unification, peace, health, and strength in the body of Christ locally and globally. Basically, a Council of Judges 
is going to protect the governance that God has given us. So you have a bunch of people, Jason and I. Jason's had some, we've had difference of ideas. So what do you do in that? Well, so far it's not been that big a deal. But if it ever became a big deal, we're pulling somebody who doesn't have ties to us. Not one person, I'm talking five, six, seven, eight people. Come in, hear us out. And their job is to, hey, how can we promote unity? How can we bring unity among this? How can we make this work? It may not always work. Paul and Barnabas had to split ways. They were still godly. They still went there. But, but at least you try. At least you have this outside perspective. Yeah. We don't want an inside perspective because they might like me more than they like Jason. So that's what our Council of Judges is all about. They'll probably like him better. <laughs> but it is one of those things. The Council of Judges... It was one of those things that literally he, he prayed and like the Lord was like, this is what it is. And it went from just being, okay, this will be an outside group for us. They're not going to be people that we do life with every day. Right. They're mature believers that are led by the Holy Ghost that if there's an issue, it's not like, okay, Reggie, you've known Sturge quite a while. You two have, and I just, I've known you five weeks now since the launch. More than likely, you're going to be biased towards him. This council of judges, is going to be people that, that we don't always do to life day to day, that they're not biased. They're truly seeking the Lord. And they might not give an answer right away. But literally when we were talking about it, we're like this will be something that starts to help us steward the Tulsa hub. But we know there's going to be more hubs outside of Tulsa. But then also this becomes a group that might, this might be their full-time jobs, that go and help other churches that are, stewarding through life in their church, whether it be a church that has really no oversight or a church that's ran by elders where they say, okay, this is not good, where some elder-driven churches fire their pastor every year. Yeah. It, I mean, that's just the way. And then other places yeah. are, don't have any oversight, really. And then, so there's obviously leadership issues on both sides of that. So this council is something that over time will develop to go help churches steward through the craziness of ministry when you just have people that get filled get more in the flesh than they are in the spirit so yep. that's the council of judges as uh and to, at, and to protect from corruption too yeah and so of course there's corruption and there's bad people as well and consistently on the move establishing exactly what god is saying for that specific location yep these pioneers have been prepared for many seasons and stretched to their limits because the task that is ahead of them is great and much training is required for Who can what relate they to are that? Caring. Who can relate to that? Stretched to their limits, man. I thought, there have been times I thought because of the stress and all, my body was literally going to just give up like crazy. But now, when everybody's freaking out, it's like, me and Robert talk about this. When everybody's freaking out, you're like, not really that big a deal. <laughs> I've seen worse. Okay. Yeah. They're carrying the seed of revival and fresh fire and will not be able to be at peace until the task is accomplished. Yes. The settling in of the pilgrims will be a very important key to what God is trying to do in this next season as God has put in on many families, many single and unmarried people, the desire to relocate and set up residency because they know what they are getting ready to birth is something permanent and will have great structure and strength. Yeah. So the birthing part, this is the first time in my life I ever felt like I was birthing something. It was like, it's not stopping. Whether I want this to happen or not, it's happening. Whether other people think it should be happening, it's happening. I can't stop it. It's coming. And it just came. And so I know a lot of people are, are in that spot. Um, we have a couple that's supposed to be coming. The Lord was giving me words for them that they were getting ready to be pregnant. So like, um, and I'm not talking about a literal baby. I'm talking about like God was impregnating a vision within them. I see Robbie, Joel, Jason, and Cassie know that they're called to at least nine more spots. So um, so we see this word again being spoken straight to what's going on here. Go ahead. 
the key components, says the Lord, for the pilgrims will be the ability to trust the Lord and have the keen awareness of the Kairos timing of the Lord on when it is time to move out. So does everybody understand what Kairos is? So there's Kronos and Kairos timing. Kronos is our clock. It's this earthly time. Kairos timing is God's timing. God's appointed time. So when you're born again, you live in two worlds. You live in Kairos. So right now, I live in Kairos all the time, but I also live in the chronological because I'm still on this earth. So when you're born again, this is a whole, but I, I actually walk in both. I'm always in God's appointed time because wherever I go, my feet, I'm treading the pe- I'm spreading the peace of the gospel. So I'm walking always in the appointed time of God, Kairos, even though I live in a chronological phase. So Kairos is the God's appointed time. And I might have to unpack that more on another night. I hear the Lord saying to these pilgrims, move out in an authoritative voice, and he is looking for those who will unite in a cadence formation and begin to relocate without questioning the command of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This will look like new community. What? What? and new relationships, what? it will be foreign for the moment, but the Lord says, my grace is sufficient. So, big part of this was community. And what the Lord was showing me, because we keep asking, what does it look like? What's it supposed to look like? And that's what he first started saying was, that what we've stepped into, not us. I'm talking about the body of Christ. What the body of Christ has stepped into, this new era, this new time, it's community. It is community. It's a big part of it. And, it, and that's what he's saying here. New community, new relationships. And it may be foreign for a moment. It may be a learning curve. It might take a second. But once we figure it out, it's just going to start flying. And I feel, honestly, I feel like we're trying to figure this out right now. I'm, I, we're, I'm even trying to figure out Saturday nights. Sometimes it's rough, sometimes it's not. I'm trying to figure it out. Lord, what's it supposed to look like? I know it's not supposed to look like normal church. So what it's a, what is it supposed to look like? And I feel like we're we're starting to figure little things out here and there. Just go with it. Just go with it. I feel like even beginning here, like he's just going to drop little things like, oh, that worked. Oh, there was a flow of God. We're, we're figuring this out. And you guys are helping us. I also heard the Lord say to the pioneers, stop, drop, and roll. For when you release the fires of revival, it is time to go ablaze another location. God will send the rest. God will finish the work again to the pioneers. The Lord says, stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll. So what's the definition of pioneer? The definition of pioneer is to to develop or to be the first to use or apply a new method area of knowledge or activity. A person who is among the first to explore or settle a new country or area. It's that, it's that new thing. It's that we're stepping into something new we've never seen before. I'm going to bring a scripture. I'll speak directly to this. But first, let me say this. I started noticing that God has called everyone to be pioneers. Every single person. Not that you are out front. Christy don't want to be out front. She don't want to be. She she would rather here. Give me the vision and I will run with it. That's still a pioneer. You're still blazing something new. That picture we shown with the pioneers. It was a whole slew of people pioneering. We pioneer together. But everyone is called a pioneer. Adam was a pioneer. It was never that way before. He was a pioneer. Abraham was a pioneer. Brand new way. Noah was a pioneer. Nobody ever built a ship before. Moses was a pioneer. Joshua, Solomon, Elijah was a pioneer. Nobody had seen stuff like that before. David was a pioneer. John the Baptist was a pioneer. Nobody had a ministry like that before, ever. Jesus was a pioneer. Peter, Paul, all the, all the disciples, really. But... You go through all those people. They were pioneers. 
They were pushing forward. They were looking to, to blazing something they've never seen before. Even after Jesus left, the disciples were left to seek the Lord. What does it look like? It, all I know is the Jewish. All I know is what walking with you, and we can't do that right now. So what does this look like? We're all called the pioneers and to be in that spot. Isaiah 43, 18 says this. Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. I've had to renew my mind in the last couple of days. Actually, I had to renew my mind this morning. Christy brought it up, and this part stuck out the most to me. Do not remember the former things. They were good. They worked. They worked for a season. They worked through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they worked really well through the first decades of the 2000s. But do not remember the former things. They won't work in this season now. The way we've done church, it's, it's done. It did its job. It did well. But if I'm here to start another church, I am out, bro. I am so out. I am so done with that. It was good. It got me to where I'm at, but I don't want that anymore. I want the new. I want the new thing. Do not remember the former things. Don't consider the things of old. They were good. They were fine. But we don't want to go backwards. The Lord always moves forward. Always. You never see Him going backwards. People say that we're supposed to go back to the Garden of Eden or whatever. I don't believe that. I believe He knew from the very beginning before He created the earth what was going to happen. It's a progression. Behold, I will do a new thing. I was telling Chrissy, I've heard so many prophecies. I'm doing a new thing. God's gonna. And you get sick of hearing it. But today I was like, it's because God's always moving forward. He's never at a standstill, and He's never stepping backwards. He's always moving forward, and we need to always be moving forward. Behold, I will do a new thing. So I'm changing my mind on hearing those prophecies. <laughs> now shall it spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Good stuff. Life, the life of God, is, is, is active. It's alive. It's still creating. It's still producing. It's new. A tree that doesn't produce new growth, it dies. It dies. Ephesians 2.20 says, Having been built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. Again, it's always a forward. We don't stay with what the apostles and the prophets give us, we built on them. We are to build on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. So many of us think that that's it. It stopped with the scriptures. It ends with the, no, it doesn't. It's what we build on. You build your building on the foundation. You don't stay at the foundation. You will freeze. You will get wet. You will get cold. It's no fun sleeping outside sometimes. In Oklahoma right now, it would not be fun sleeping outside. But we build on the foundation of the apostles. It's a forward. It's, it's what pioneers do. We move forward. Philippians 3.12 says this. Not that I have already attained it. Everybody knows this scripture. Or am I already been made perfect? But I press on. That's forward. That's God's character. Move forward that I may lay hold for with that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. I do not consider myself yet to have apprehended it, but one thing I do, forget those things which are behind. There it is again. If you are of the belief that you need two or three scriptures, there you go. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And I've noticed people who always want to go back to the way things were. People that want to, yeah, relive the glory days or music was better back then. All oh, those songs were so great back then. Yeah, they were. But we got to keep our eyes forward and keep moving into the new. Because if we still live there, it just gets stagnant and old. And, and I've noticed, what I have noticed is that it, 
when people start dwelling in that place, they start to die. They start to get discouraged. We should always be actively seeking the Lord, knocking, asking, ask, seek, and knock. We should always be pressing into that. You should always be in a spot where you're like, what does it look like? I'm blazing a trail. You don't know what's ahead. You only can see so far, but you keep going and you'll know when you get there. You'll know what you're pioneering when you get there. <laughs> so I wrote down a few characteristics of pioneering. Pioneers are willing to search the Father's heart no matter what. Even when it's a side you've never heard or seen before. So you're just going forward. Man, a few years ago, I started getting stuff that I heard nobody talking about. But pioneers are all, you, you're willing to go there. You're willing to say, Lord, teach me. And it opened the door for even more revelation on other things that's total opposite of what other people speak about. And now even the righteousness thing. That I'm starting to see righteousness in a way I've never seen it before. But pioneers are willing to search that out and to go to the Father and say, what is it? What is it? Pioneers search out everything. Pioneers aren't triggered. I'm going to jump in go on ahead. pioneers search out everything. In one of our documents, we actually have words or things that we've been raised in church over, I was raised Catholic, that he said, I'm redefining these. So righteousness was one of those. But it's actually a list of things like he's like, I'm going to have you study these things. And so for us to get through all those things, it's going to be like, probably three years because there's just so much that he said but he's redefining so much and yeah. saying that and so it's for us we're asking what is your heart on what is your heart on righteousness what is your heart on authority submission because there's a lot of whack teaching on submission and authority in the body of christ um and covid revealed that if i truly believe how authority and submission and authority was taught for the 20 years prior i must do everything the government said and the whole, so there was just a whole thing that COVID revealed the mismanagement of the teaching of submission and authority. So that's one of the things that we're going to teach on. And he's like, I'm going to bring you back to my heart on these topics. And so that it's going to be a stretch on for most of us. There's going to be topics that some hit your toes a little bit harder than others. But yeah. we literally have a list that the Lord said, these are things that I'm going to have you search out to define it through the kingdom perspective, not the church hierarchical model. And yeah. so that's one of the things that we are searching out. And so righteousness is currently the one he highlighted for the next thing. And we'll just keep walking through these. Yep. So pioneers keep their eyes on the prize, on the territory allotted to them. They press on to gain it. So what, what I mean by that is you know what you're called to. So social media will do this to you. You're going after something and boom, everything starts triggering you. Oh, trigger. Christy calls it squirrels. You're, you're not triggered. You're not reacting. Because some people live, I've, I've lived most of my life in reaction. Just reacting to everything com that comes at me. No, go keep your eyes over here. That's what pioneers do. If, if you're a pioneer and you're just triggered by everything and you're reacting to everything, you will never get to your destiny. You will be blazing sideways and backwards and all around in circles <laughs> pioneers are willing to listen and hear and run after things that no one else is paying attention to that's what i was talking about when the lord starts speaking to you just start listening start going for it you know i got this little thing here about reformation we have we have um a lot of prophecies out right now about reformation coming to the church and if you study what Reformation is, I, every time I hear that prophecy and, and people get excited about it, I am like, do they know what Reformation does? It's not a pretty thing. It changes. It challenges you. Reformation goes after your doctrine. So if Reformation come into the church, that means we got doctrine issues in the church. So what's that look like? Because the church agrees on a lot of pretty much everything. We all agree on a lot of stuff. I feel like we have some things that challenge those things. And even more, they keep coming. But pioneers are willing to listen and hear even when nobody else is. And not that you're trying to 
come up with this, these messages or these words that nobody else is. I am. I do not care for that. <laughs> I'm not into that. I, I'd rather have a peaceful life. But pioneers are willing to listen when nobody else is and willing to, to let the Lord speak to them and to confront those things. And the church will never change unless pioneers start speaking out and start sharing what the Lord's given them. The Reformation that's common, it'll challenge the last 200 years of, the, of crazy doctrine that has entered your church that everybody accepts. And what he's saying is like, we're not trying to... We didn't pick the topics that he said we're going to redefine just to be different. Like, that's just... To be different just to be different is just stupid. Yeah. Like, he laughs sometimes on Marcos. I'm like, this is just stupid. Yeah. He's like, I'm waiting for you to just do that some Saturday night. So here it is. But it's it's not just being different to be different. It's being different because this is what we, the Lord's saying that we he wants us to do. Yeah. And very rarely, it's one of the things, we are pointing some things out. But really what he said is, just do the different. And be the light and you'll have people that come. Yeah. You don't have to cut the old system to be the light in the new system where people go, huh. Maybe the last 30 years, of the church, church growth model wasn't working. It got people in, but the people didn't know Jesus. So how do we do a system that, if we were, if you study the Iranian church, the American church could not have withstood what the Iranian church withstood. They were the most persecuted church, but they were growing the fastest. Because when you accepted Jesus, you were stepping out of a system that said you now are dead because you rejected that system how many of us have had to make that step when we do but the american the western style church when you come against certain models that built mega churches and you say the lord's saying but this is a better way having a community that it doesn't matter i know in here if something happened when we were in ohio i know there would have been people that would have been there in 14 hours i know i had people i could call when I went to a mega church in Virginia Beach, I had nobody that I would have called. Nobody. And that church was over 5,000 members. So in this small group, I have people that I know would be there in a heartbeat over a church that had 5,000. That's what he's wanting. He's wanting community to be built. And so it's actually... Can, can I say something on that last part? Yeah. Right quick. This, I've shared things with you guys that you may not agree with. And you've told me. I think you're a little off, and that's okay. We can still run with each other. There are times where something Reggie says, I may not agree with it. I can still run with him. Uh, if I present something that you don't agree with, all I'm saying is, listen, we're pioneering through this. Hold on. Let's just take out a few more trees and see. I, I do believe something's on the other side of these trees. And you're like, I think you're crazy. Well, just walk with me for a few more steps. And just, we can still walk with each other. We can still pioneer with each other and still not agree and we talked about this place being a place of and not just this place i'm talking about your life celebrating differences celebrating more individuality we're not meant to look the same that's okay someone said how do you steward that i don't know we're getting ready to find out i don't know how we steward it but i know there's going to be we're going to have all kinds of differences and we're still going to be okay with it because it's just like your family my brother sometimes could get on my nerves, but he's still my brother. I still run with him. I'm still there for him when he needs me. Well, the, an example that he brought up is we have four moms here. You're all moms. You do it a little bit different, but your goal is what? To raise a kid that you can say, go in the world and be fruitful. Like your goal is the same. You might do it a little bit different. We use Epic. You, I don't know how you score your children. You know, Lena goes to Union. You guys are joining Epic, and you did a, like a non-school model for a year or two. All the same objective. Not one is better than the other. And they're all moms with the same heartbeat that I want my child to do better than I did. A lot of the arguments that are issues are because of pride. Let's call it what it is. I have to be right, and my self-esteem is based on me being right versus being humble and saying, hey, there might be another way. There might be a better way, or there might just be another option that achieves the same goal. At least three options with your, with your moms 
achieving schooling for your kids. They all have benefits, pros and cons. And you can discuss them and walk away again. Okay, this is what I'm going to do with my family. And that's the simple part of it. Well, one of the things is there's an apostle in the area that I follow. His name's Don Hughes. He literally had a post that said a lot of what we call disagreements is literally on terminology. Yeah, I can't I remember who it was with. And it was when I was in Ohio. And there I was like, hey, what, what is your definition of this? Because we were using the same term, talking about two different things. Once we defined what it was, there was no disagreement. But if you go back to this thing, it required communication and open and honesty. You know, and that's one thing that is going to do with, deal with a lot of disagreements is honest and open communication. So I don't know how I jumped to the scripture, um, but Acts 2... It is one of our founding scriptures. If you look, it's on the front page of that document. And I actually found one of the places that said this was pioneering in the early church. So I'm like, okay, it fits. But this is what we're looking at for breakaway. Every believer was faithfully devoted to following the teaching of the apostles. Their hearts were mutually linked to one another, sharing communion and coming together regularly for prayer. A deep sense of holy awe swept over everyone. And the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. All the believers were in fellowship as one body, and they shared with one another whatever they had. Out of generosity, they sold their assets to distribute their proceeds to those who were in need among them. Daily they met together in the temple courts and in one another's homes to celebrate communion. They shared meals together with joyful hearts and tender humility. They were com continually filled with praises to God, Enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord kept adding to them daily the numbers. That's pioneering. One of the things is, is getting back to what was written in Acts. What did they do? They were a community. We're not saying we're creating a campus where everybody sells everything. We move. That's not what we're saying. But the heart of it is, what? Community. It's, we're actually there for people. When you're struggling, and most of us here, the older ones, the more, more mature ones, We've been in church, we've been in how many churches? I think four main churches. Most of the time when you're struggling, that's when you hear from people the least. When we were actually looking to move out here to uh, Oklahoma, some of our good friends still, we were, we were running the kids' ministry. And I was part of the setup team, actually one of the main people, because I pulled the trailer with the equipment. And we were walking through some stuff, and everybody asked, how you doing? And you know, everybody gives that, I'm good. If somebody asked the second question, I broke down. The one person that goes, are you really okay? I lost it. But how many of us have been there where we're walking through something, and I go, how you doing, Reggie? <laughs> All good, great. Have a great day. And you move on. But there was literally the one friend that goes, are you really okay, Olivia? How was your week really been? And it was just like, ah! It was just, I literally lost it, and then he's like, okay. And then he's actually the one that gave us um, sparkling gems from Rick Renner, and he, like, he started like feeding us, and that's what got us through. But how many of us have been one question away from actually breaking down in front? But I could make it through. I could walk to him and say, I'm good. He'd ask me how I'm doing, I could walk around. But if I had to engage beyond the one question, I wasn't in a place I could do it. And the kids sure weren't asking how I was doing. But it was one of those things when somebody took the time to say, man, I know what you said, but you just, your continence is different. You just look like you're carrying the weight, a weight that's different than normal. What's really going on? Most of us, when we're walking through something, we're that close to letting people know what's going on. But for me, it was a little bit of pride that I had to deal with. And most people didn't really care enough. Surface Christianity is rampant. And so this is, this is the heart of it. But, you know, this, this requires being a little dirty, getting in people's business, knowing what's going on, and being able to say, hey, yeah, probably not the wisest decision. Actually, probably stupid, but we're going to get through this. We're going to help you steward through this season because we know that the, it can be restored. Everything in the kingdom can be restored if you submit it to it, the Lord and say, Let, what's the process? He'll restore everything. It doesn't matter what you've done. He can restore everything. So that's... Part of, as we're pioneering, it's doing what the early church did. It's actually being a community. 
And then another scripture I had is Ephesians, I think I have up there, 10 through 13. And everybody reads the verse 11. And so I decided, well, I didn't decide. I was just looking to, I always look at different versions before I share. But verse 10, something stood out, is the same one who descended is also the one who ascended above the heights of heaven in order to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things. And then it goes in, he appointed apostles, all this type of stuff. But I literally message surge. I'm like, have you ever read Ephesians 4.10 and actually looked at what it said? We are in this season of restoration. When he ascended, restoration started. And I'm, I'm going to go there. We went in, in the message. I'm not waiting on the earth to be destroyed. He said it is finished. It, it, what was finished on the cross? The devil was defeated. If I believe that Christ has, that earth has to be destroyed, he promised it will never destroy the earth again. He started restoration when he ascended and seated on the throne. I don't sit here and wait for the world to get darker. I believe he's bringing earth to a point of restoration where heaven is brought to earth. I don't need the rapture to bring heaven to earth. We are the king, sons of God who bring restoration to this earth. And that's the glory, that's the triumphant church. And I looked up the scripture, Romans 8, 19. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. We are sons and daughters of God. Reveal yourself in the earth and darkness will flee. That's the pioneering that we're to take over. We're, I'm not waiting for looking for the next Antichrist because that's been, for 200 years they've been saying this is the Antichrist, this is the Antichrist. The Antichrist has been defeated. It's done. It's finished. He's under our feet. Let's be the sons of God. Let's do what we're called to do. That's what it's talking about here. And how do we do it? He gives a fivefold to help restore heaven on earth. We're not going back to glory. We're restoring heaven on earth. That's what we're called to be doing. He finished the work. The work of the enemy was ended. He ascended. Now we're in the phase of restoration. When Adam sinned, what happened? Death entered. Our life cycle got shorter, didn't it? They were living 900 years, and then we were promised one one. But he finished the cycle of death. We're now in the cycle of life. He is restoring all things. Not at the rapture. He's restoring all things today. In my life, in my body, in my community, in my fellowship, in the people that I surround myself, life is restored. And so he uses a fivefold. But if you skip to the next slide. Yeah, what, what Olivia sent a video earlier. And if you, if you watch it in the second, before he gets into it, in the second minute mark, he says, the, he's talking about the perfect storm in America. And he says, these things will not happen if righteousness is revealed in the earth. Because when righteousness is revealed, they can't happen. Righteousness brings life. Unrighteousness brings death, which we'll talk about next week. But So I like how he did that. Because he said, Listen, we're set up for a perfect storm, and this is what the Lord showed me. But it doesn't have to happen if righteousness is revealed in the earth. I thought that was so good. And on that, so righteousness eliminates it. So when these prophetic words come about it getting darker, it's a call for the righteousness, righteous to stand up, to manifest yourself, so that we don't go through it. If you study history, there's been prophetic cycles of, no, this is the end times. God's coming at this point because all these X, Y, you can look at people saying the events of Revelation have happened like four times. If you study it out, people have been saying, nope, you see this lines up here. They've been saying it for cycles over the last 200 years, but that's a whole nother thing. But here, and their calling to the fivefold, and their calling is to nurture and prepare the holy believers to do their own works of ministry. And as they do this, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. These grace ministries will function until, say until. Until. Until we obtain oneness in faith, until we experience the fullness of what it means to be a son of God, and finally we become one to a perfect man with the full dimension of spiritual maturity and fully developed into the abundance of Christ. There's a place where, as all of us are mature, mature believers, you come to a service like this to bring. You're not coming to be fed because 
the fivefold is until. There's a place where we all sit together as believers. There's no titles when we, at the end, when we're fully restored, there's not a apostle prophet. It's nope. one. Yep. Because the grace ministries are t until you reach maturity. And we have a friend, he's like, I don't go to church. I don't look at, I don't call somebody pastor because I'm at a place now I'm mature that I go and feed myself. And there's seasons when we all need to be helped. And so what is the fivefold? We're here until you become one with Christ and you get your revelation from him. But as a community, what happens? We bring things that will all bring us closer to God every time we meet. So three more things right quick. So I came to a spot where I, I love revelation. I love insight. I love digging. I love praying to the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom and I get it. But it came to a spot where I was getting all this stuff. But my life was just staying the same. So a thing with pioneers is they don't just get information and sit. They move. Faith without works is dead. You can't produce by sitting on a couch. <laughs> you can't produce by simply receiving revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and insight. We have to go. Jesus said, my reward is with me. I will reward, reward each person according to what he has, what? <laughs> done, is what it says. So we get rewarded for what we do. Why is that? Because our righteousness produces. If you're, if you're hooked up to the vine, you produce fruit. It's, it's a going. It's a growing. Pioneers just don't sit. They move. You can't blaze a new trail by just sitting and praying. You, it takes more. It takes a going. Jesus prayed, but he also went. Pioneers stand strong when all the rest turn away. Jesus did this many times. In the garden, can you not just pray one hour? You can fish all night, but you can't pray all night. What's going on? So you encourage them to keep going, to press forward regardless of the obstacles. I'm telling you, a lot of times, with, with this lady we've been speaking to about this school, she experienced some obstacles and some failures, and she had to shut it down. My encouragement to her is like, it's good, it's okay to shut down, but only for a season. Keep going. Just because it didn't work out the first time doesn't mean anything. You learned your lessons. Now you know what to do to help it succeed. And I've done that so many times in my life where it's like, well, that didn't work. And then you use that to help you succeed in the next one. Pioneers, there will always be opposition, but you got to move anyway. When I was doing this life coach thing, putting it all together to, for businesses, the, the number one thing that keeps people from moving forward is fear. Just fear of like, of, of what people might think or fear if it's going to work out or how am I going to get work, uh, business, or what, what, if, what if I fail? It's like, well, you'll never know if you don't go for it. You'll never know. Fear what others may think. Fear of, what, what, fear of others challenging you. I'm speaking to myself here. Fear of making the wrong move. The, all these things paralyze you. They stop a pioneer from moving. Fear that you aren't prepared. When Jesus called Peter... James, John, all them. He, none of them were prepared. They didn't have it together. They weren't qualified. He didn't go pick deacons from the church. He picked dudes that were like zealots, tax collectors. Like he was calling the unqualified. And the Bible talks about he uses us, the unqualified, to... The, un, the dudes who lack wisdom to shame the wise. Fear that you don't add up. Fear that you don't have what you need to succeed. It's just a lot of fear. But pioneers move past that. We go anyway. We move anyway. And I just want to add, I firmly believe Jesus never asked us to do something that he didn't do. And if you study Jesus' life, he was a pioneer in his life. He was... He's called the chief apostle. He's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, chief apostle, all these things. But he was a pioneer. And what he shows us is pioneering is a normal aspect of kingdom community. 
Is it common today? No. What's common in church is shallow relationships. You agree with me, and if you don't, shut up, sit down, and get out of the way. Stop, drop, and roll out of the way if you don't agree with me. But he's calling us to be pioneers, and that is normal. When I was in chiropractic, I used to do a talk, common versus normal. Disease and sickness is common in America, right? But it's not normal. The body was designed to heal itself, period. So if I know that statement, when somebody tells me they have a disease, I know that is not normal. That is not normal body function to be in disease. That is a lack of wholeness. So how do I go from there's a disease to understanding what is the imbalance that is causing that lack of wholeness? All diseases is a lack of wholeness. So the same thing. All that we have is, in the church, we have things that are common. What is causing that thing to be common or to be diseased that all we have to do is bring back wholeness? And that's bringing Christ back to the center of everything. In understanding, we are all called to be pioneers. We're all called to walk out because all of us are called. What he, God does not duplicate. He doesn't need to duplicate he wants everybody to do their part. When everybody does their part, it's a beautiful symphony. It's a beautiful orchestra of the kingdom of God advancing and manifesting on earth. Right. So I'll end with this. Uh, Kairos time. God's appointed time. You can't make yourself birth something. You don't want to get in front of the Lord. You want to be in his Kairos time, as that prophecy said, which we'll send to everyone, because I believe it will speak to everyone. But at the same time, as I told Robbie when he was here, and he just wanted to go to Hawaii so bad, and, and that's all he could think about, was, okay, bro, we were thinking it was a year away or so. My thought was, hey, even, the Lord, even though the Lord's not sending you, you can still start putting it together here. You can still start praying into it here. You can still start laying down the vision for it, where you want to be, what you want to do. The documents. There's... Even though it's not being birthed, you could still be putting it together and praying into it. Can I say something? Yes. Um, I sent that video of John Paul Jackson to yeah. the group because I've been in prayer over tonight's meeting. And in my spirit, I just kept hearing the Lord say, pioneering the wilderness in the time of the storm. Wow. And I just was like, okay. And I kept on, then he brought back, because I haven't watched or heard his, his, uh, prophecies on those things for many, many years. But every so while, the Lord will bring me back to those things because I also have another spiritual mentor who has had lots of um, revelation about those things as well. Mm -hmm. But um, literally for the last two, well, I mean, pretty much every single time I've come here, the Lord reminds me of a vision that I saw at a house church that I went, I attended about um, circa 2008 to 2010. If you don't mind, I'd like to share that vision. Yeah, go for it. So um, we were in worship. It's well, easier for him here. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I think that that you'll hear and see a lot of the tie-ins to what I saw and what the Lord is doing with this. So um, I hope it speaks to you. Um, we were in worship, and I saw a vision of, I was on a very, very high mountain on a cliff, and then kind of adjacent to me over here, just a little, on a ledge, a little lower than me, and then down below, I could see the map of the United States, and on the cliff that was below me, it was night, and uh, I could just see kind of like it was like LED outlined the states and the country. And uh, I saw this, I, I, at first I heard the cadence of people marching. And I saw a line going up and around the mountain and then they were on this cliff. But when they got to a certain point here, they all had boots on, um, all different ages, people of all different, demographics and uh, at one point they would all kind of get to and they were just in perfect line when they got to a certain point they got down in a runner's pose and it's like all of a sudden they were just shooting off this cliff 
and the spirit would carry them. I'm gonna cry, sorry. The spirit would carry them and they would land all over the map and wherever they land, it's like we could see that they died. They were a living seed, but then they died. Not necessarily literally, but it's the point of being um, poured out as a drink offering, being, you know, dying to self and literally being the plant that goes into the ground there and dying, but coming and rebirthing. So whenever I saw someone land on the map, a fire broke out. And then that place on the map would just light up. And I do believe that what God is birthing right now with this ministry, with the ones that it will be connected with, and lots of other things that we're hearing about with other groups all over the place that and even in other countries we're coming into this new era and we are seeing i am seeing this happening and it's just remarkable to see the sacrifice of this generation because it's going to take sacrifice it's going to take complete surrender and these people, the Lord showed me, these people cared nothing for themselves. They were 100% on fire inside, and they needed that fire to get out. And that's how, that's how it happened. Like, the Lord just, the Lord just did this. I mean, that's it, like. What, how do you want me to say this? They just cared, I mean, they just cared nothing for themselves. They were an army. And they, thank you, Lord. They were just, they were one. They were in sync. And they had their orders, and they just went. But it was, it was all completely God. And I wish I could draw this. I wish I could somehow illustrate how this looks, but it's just beautiful, this vision I saw. And, uh, but yeah, I truly believe that what's being birthed here is definitely, you're on track. You guys know you're on track. Um, yeah, just keep going with it. That's it. I like how you said pioneering the wilderness in the time of storm, or someone said that, was it you? Pioneering the wilderness in the time of a storm. That's what the Israelites did. They were in their promised land, but they had to pioneer through these cities that were supposed to be theirs. It was a storm to them. They still had to go through it, but they came out more than victorious. So it's good. We Yes, we encounter things. This perfect storm, we might have to go through that. But we're still conquerors. We still come out on top. We're still pioneers.